there are many other people here. Dr. Harish, uh, could I, Dr. Harish, are you still with us? And I also want to bring uh, Dr. Binoy Babu, because Binoy is a public health person, he's an MPH, and he's... Uh, uh, Can you unmute your mic, please? Dr. Binoy, unmute your mic. Hi, uh, good evening all. I'm very happy to see that uh, Dr. Madan and Dr. Basmati Madam is uh, conducting this uh, webinar. And thank you so much uh, for inviting me. It was a pleasure to meet you all. Uh, in fact, actually, I was thinking that in the, you know, in the Aish talk, I was thinking that the Ayurveda people, as well as the Yunani, then yoga, and uh, homeo, all will be there like that I thought initially, along with Siddha. But later on, one by one, you were able to pick up, and it was really a nice discussion. And I'm, uh, I'm really hoping that there will be a policy decision in the central level, as well as, you know, but I think uh, that it is high time for us uh, to think uh, more than this one health idea. So what I feel is like, as I already mentioned this to Dr. Madan, we should think about actually one world now. And you know, this RCT, this randomized control trials are taking long time these days. So we need to, you know, formulate uh, some sort of uh, uh, formula so that, you know, we will be getting some early results as well as there should be a one platform by which all the you know medical scientists and all the systems will be able to learn what is happening around the world. For example, for Ayurveda, what is happening? For Yunani, what is happening? For Siddha, what is happening? For example, you can take the example of COVID-19 and what are all the you know things which we are doing. There should be a platform by which you know we can upload all those things and so that the rest of the world can see that and you know, without time delay, we will be able to, you know, uh, we will be able to replicate it if it is possible in that side. I know that there is a, you know, if I stop you here just to add some speed this discussion along, you have just heard Nirmalji's comment and call for help, and you are you are in the public health area. What is it that we can do together? Is there something? But we actually, can do? now we are also working in the national level for One Health. So mm -hmm. that One Health approach, uh, we are actually digitalizing that platform. So what are all there... things which are there in that IDSP, that Integrated Disease uh, Surveillance Program? So all those uh, data we are trying to integrate in one platform, and it is done by the WHO, World Health Organization, and it is called IHIP portal. That is Integrated Health Information Portal. So it I... is coming up. So could, can you tell us, could you tell us a little more about this portal, the IHIP portal? Uh, yes, sir. Actually, in this IHIP portal, what are all data you know, we are capturing? Actually, uh, now, currently, if you are taking the example of uh, Kerala, we are, you know, we are collecting a lot of data on COVID. And uh, there are many duplications which are happening. And mm -hmm. after some time only, we will understand that there is a lot of you know, time loss time laws and also we are spending a lot of money for all these things and you know the data will not be you know centralized and uh, data will not be identical so all these uh, issues will come so what we are planning is like all the data if it, everything is coming into one platform mm -hmm. uh, from all the states in india then it will be very much useful also we are now one national program is uh, coming up from our side that is national program for climate change and human health so in that, one of the component is ARI surveillance. And now, tomorrow, actually, the, we, are, we are conducting one conference. Uh, we are giving a training for all those uh, newly picked up uh, a acute respiratory illness uh, surveillance in context with uh, air pollution. And I was fortunate enough to establish the same in Kerala state in three uh, different districts, namely Trivandrum, Ernakulam, and uh, Calicut. So there we are, uh, you know, in taking the data from the emergency service only initially, so that we are trying to build up a basic data in context with uh, AQI, so that the policy makers will be able to, you know, take a decision on what to do and what not to do. Could we, uh, I want to bring in, uh, Binoy, don't go away. I would like to bring in uh, Dr. Krishna. Um, we are finding it difficult to bring Krishnaji, Namaskar. 
कृष्ण जी कृष्ण कमल कृष्ण हेलो कमल कृष्ण जी कैन यू अनम्यूट वी वॉन्ट टू ब्रिंग यू ऑनलाइन बिकॉज यू हैव सेवरल वैल्यूबल कॉमेंट्स हियर हेलो no uh, 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 sorry kamal ji i can see him on the list but i can't now binoy i have we have colleagues here jagveer rawat who is from haryana and we have been discussing for several few years now about the one health program jagveer ji would you like to make some comments correctly i heard his comments and uh, what he was telling is like in from ayurveda they are trying to build up one uh, uh, one a veterinary uh, veterinary college so okay. it's a great initiative yeah okay. thank you thank you i wish we could have had krishna ji's uh, uh, contributions here dr banik i think he might be in a place where he does not understand his phone or he's in a very mm-hmm. loud place so he's not able to Ram, could i bring vasuthi uh, ji i want to bring ramya uh, in here ramya ramya you are Hi sir um Ramya, yeah I'm, how are you Yeah basically I'm from uh, Kerala and I'm here in UK um since 12 years um like I'm practicing um just from my home itself I don't have any clinic or anything like that um and um for some um I think in um 2015 I had to go back to India and uh, I was practicing in Kerala for a manufacturing unit for two years um before that i was practicing in here in coventry for two years as a part time practitioner um like um uh, every saturday i was practicing for part time just for one day um and uh, the thing i see here in uk is to be frank um the you know uh, it's like just uh, only for massage people are coming it's they um they're not coming for a proper treatment maybe because of the you know the um monetary related matter or i don't know what what's yes. the main problem is like um, as i have practiced both in kerala and in uk i can find out the difference um like um uh, means people are just uh, looking ayurveda as just like a spa like uh, they are just coming for spa related treatment not for any disease or something like that and there is some restrictions regarding the uh, you know the medicines as well like regarding rasa preparations uh, in kerala we can give rasa preparations and we are getting uh, good uh, results from that but here in uk to be frank um, we are not allowed to practice rasa preparations um yeah, so were you if you were with us during the first part of the discussion you could hear comments made by eleni and some uh, of the sorry people. i could join only in between so okay. uh, might so be i i didn't hear have, that uh, sorry yeah. for that um, had, but i we sorry had yeah colleagues. we had three colleagues from the national health service today with us so there are some discussions going on and we had the professor yk gupta also with us and some good discussions have you know today has been a very important day because we have enabled some very very good discussions so i take okay. all your points now i have a question for you ramya are you yeah. are you talking to us today are you here in coventry today um right now uh, basically i'm from lester i was yeah. working in coventry for 2 years now i'm not working for them because that clinic has actually closed uh, you know because of the Uh, all these reasons to be frank now will you share will you be able to share your email address and uh, whatsapp yeah, number yeah 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 sure sure yeah i can, can share it can now it yeah with us and then we will be happy to have you you know that's the other is remia where your knowledge about rasa dravyas is not being conveyed and so when the uk people are confused and they just say oh heavy metals heavy metals and they just get scared there's a place where someone like you needs to speak articulately and accurately that rasa dravyas are very useful in kerala they are very effective for chronic diseases and for cancers and for inflammation and that there are people who are clinically able 
use it effectively, even if they can't explain it in scientific parameters, because physics, quantum physics, which is the basis of the uh, rasadravyas, as you know, the molecular structure of the particles that are the metals that are encased in the dravyas of the plants. Those are not understood by chemistry. This is a problem that material scientists have. They say that the chemists don't talk to the physicists and the physicists don't talk to the chemists. But in between, we have medical doctors like you and me who are trying to convince those people who cannot understand the technical parts of medicine or of physics, chemistry, or material science. And what's happening is that people are losing their lives because they're not getting access to rasadravyas because you've got a group of people who blindly believe that rasadravyas and heavy metals are dangerous because they don't understand. It's people like you, Remya, that need to articulate it better, find people around you who can help you to articulate it, and write it in the local newspapers, tell it to your patients, tell them that if I had rasadravyas, which I can't have in the UK, that would be so good of a treatment for you. When I find cancer patients who are really wanting to live, if they don't want to live, I say, fine, to use the chemotherapy, use what modern medicine gives you, that's fine. And I, I help them only to the extent that they believe in modern medicine. But if they really want to live, I tell them quietly, listen, what you really need is treatment with Rasa Oshudhis, go to India. Now, the COVID situation over the last nine months, eight months has really changed that. But when the COVID situation is over, Remya, you should practice using Rasa Oshudhis by telling yeah. Referring them. See, if I refer to an orthopedist, I don't say that I don't use orthopedics. I say that I refer to them. So we, you and me, because we understand their efficacy, we should actively refer people to India. If they don't go, that's their choice. But they should be going to a place where it's legally usable. That's correct. Yeah, that's... Uh, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, we have to send them back to India. Uh, we can't practice here. Means the thing is, uh, patients w won't be able to afford, you know, um, the flight tickets and all those things. So they will look for a so um, solution here itself. And here, to be frank, they don't allow even to bring medicines as well. That's right. So, so how come we are, how come we'll practice here even if we don't have the medicines with us? Well, we won't practice here in the UK. What you'll do is you'll tell them as part of your practice that the cure for them, if they choose to live, is to go back to India and get Rasa Oshadis. And if they can't yeah. afford it, then they don't actually value their life. Because if That's they're willing, you know, I mean, when people get very sick, they sell their cow, they sell their land, and they go for treatment. In London, people have the national health system, but if they really want something, they save the money, they borrow the money, and they go and they buy it, whatever it is, whatever it is, right? So that's true. <laughs> yeah. Do it. If they want that Gucci bag, that Gucci bag is not paid for National Health Service, but they need it for their health, for their shopping, uh, shopping, uh, what do they call it, illness, right? Yeah, they'll definitely buy it for sure. <laughs> that's true. And if they need it for their work, they'll say, I needed these 500 pounds. And if you can afford 500 pounds to buy a pair of shoes, you can certainly afford it to go to India and get treatment. That's right, Basvati. We are about <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Remya. Remya thank you for sharing your uh, details with us. Yeah, now, thank you. Thank you. We will be in touch because your okay. comments are very important. Now, we are about four minutes from four hours when we are online. So we need and to go then. And I really want to... I really end this. Wind down. I, can I give Aditi, who is here with us, Aditi, will, you have one minute to tell us something, Aditi. What did you think about our event today? Can you hear me? Um, Aditi, hello. Who is that? Uh, we're going to, Dr. Harish is there. Let's get Aditi into the participants group. Okay. Aditi, Aditi. Yeah. Can I speak? No. Is that Kamal Krishn? Namaskarji. Dr. Harish. Dr. Harish. Hello. Hello. Who is going to speak? Dr. Harish, you are going to speak first or is Aditi going to speak first? Yeah, go ahead, Aditi. Tell us what your impressions are of today. Uh, thank you, sir and ma'am, to bringing me. 
like the first impression which i had was of sambhasha parishad uh, i like to bring in this thing that in charak samhita we have mentions of uh, seven sambhasha parishad are mentioned when whenever we go through the chapter and uh, when you all were talking about uh, what how we can uh, make students learn the soft skills i believe this this is the way and that is what you you are doing through ayush valley because this is kind of a sambhasha parishad this is the modern way uh, modern day sambhasha parishad wherein you are bringing such a diverse number of people with so uh, varied ideas and so wonderful practices they are uh, doing uh, which i can even think of so it's, it's so great so that is the way we are communicating and many things which were pointed out uh, earlier also in few of the webinars wherein the the cross cu cross cultural communication so this is the way how i think students can uh, develop their soft skills and they can present themselves or either they can even learn if they can't present then at least they can learn how to present themselves through Aditi. these discussions aditi do you think so the best way Aditi, do you think yes, if we had more frequent sessions only for students, or with a section for students, do you think more students will join? Yes, sir. I believe because uh, one thing was that, uh, like, uh, uh, I'm just a final year student. I was sort of overwhelmed with uh, such uh, like wonderful minds, and I was like, okay, I I I lack so much knowledge in many aspects, but I believe. to be part of uh, this webinar i learn even more so uh, i think both the ways it should go like uh, attending these lectures as well and also a uh, separate platform for uh, mainly students wherein they can come up with their various ideas and uh, people like uh, all the delegates who were uh, invited today they can guide us through all our ideas uh, like as a, as our mentors so that would be a wonderful way out and even people students will feel that yeah their voices are being heard and they can open up their minds which previously they thought that uh, okay we can't think in this way we can't go out of box we just need to pass on our exams and the uh, like cage in uh, mind which they had earlier thank you aditi thank you so much for adding to our discussion we are 2 minutes what we she just uh, spoke madan aditi what you just spoke is exactly gurukul that's exactly what yes, you just spoke and it's a wonderful thing that the young students of today the people in their 20s and 30s are saying we want gurukul if you don't call it gurukul fine call it forum call it you know discussion group whatever but what you're asking for effectively is we want the return of the gurukul and that is the only way that real doctors learn whatever system they're in whether they're doctors of allopathy homeopathy ayurveda siddha it has to be gurukul so uh, ma'am uh, like if uh, if time permits can i uh, add one more point which was going on in my head by this time uh, like uh, when we come down to ayurveda if we split it it is ayur uh, like ayur and veda i use it, i use is life life knowledge so uh, gurukula doesn't com compiles only healing system it compiles each and every system in it and when we, uh, when it says veda that is knowledge that is what uh, students <laughs> need to acquire so that this uh, thing which we see, see this fear mongering thing which is going on uh, for the ayush fraternity Uh, which has been going on now it is changing somewhat but it still persists so how can we come out of it it is we we are mo we mostly focused upon uh, like there are two terms education and knowledge education is most mostly about training in a pattern and when we come down to knowledge it is knowing the facts through experiences and i have this uh, believe that gurukul system is the one which promotes knowledge rather than education and that is what when uh, when a student when aspires for true knowledge he won't uh, uh, bar himself in like no this is my arena and this is has to come up and this is only the way i need to come up like, like uh, when we see uh, those uh, uh, some ayurvedic fanatics and uh, few allopathic people who are like 
no allopathy is the one which is uh, with, with uh, who second grade uh, ayush uh, and say that that is an alternative uh, medicine so for those people who uh, subside uh, other uh, people's pathy they, for them it is a better opportunity like they can if they uh, if they are trained to focus more upon aspiring knowledge then i believe they'll come out of their cages and work for uh, knowledge because then they won't have any bars like we, are, we won't be thinking upon this is the set we have to follow this is a set path we have to follow the, uh, we have to reach to the hierarchies when it comes down to knowledge we uh, we don't see that that person is uh, going ahead of us when we are aspiring for true knowledge i believe thank you thank you everything your contribution is very very important we've taken note of several of the things that you have raised uh, i want to see Uh, Basmati, how are you for time? Are we going to wind this down? We are, or yeah. do you want to take some Dr. more? Doctor Harish wants to say something, and we are still waiting for Doctor Kamal Krishna Banik, who is writing in the chat a lot of really wonderful comments. Yes, I know he's putting Kamal. Um, yeah. Can't unmute, and he can't tell us that he can't unmute. I yeah. wish he could write in the chat that he can't unmute. So uh, Doctor Harish, could you tell us what you were going to say? You're unmute. It, it is my one question only: How we can indicate this? allopathic medicine and other medicine which you said it is complementary not as a, as a alternative medicine how we, we can integrate these these things uh harish ji i uh, thank you for your question now i don't know where kaha, where are you today ji harish ji hello harish are you an uh, ayurvedic physician Dr. Harish, you're on mute. We're wondering if you're an Ayurvedic physician or if you are making that comment from some other place, Dr. Harish. Okay, Dr. Harish is not unmuting himself. Uh, Dr. Harish, I think that in order for us to lead, lead a peaceful. a uh, forward movement we cannot talk about defeating others so we cannot defeat the allopathic community what we need to do is find a place for each person and the diversity you know india says unity in diversity we cannot decide which is the best indian language right and say everyone has to speak it because the need to have people speaking malayalam and bengali and marathi and telugu and punjabi is just as necessary as everyone being able to communicate in the same language so what we've decided is that there are some common languages like hindi and english uh, that work for indians but that the unis unity and diversity means that everyone has to have their own so similarly in medical systems we need to have a common platform maybe it's a clinical form a documentation but it's just as bad for ayurveda to bully others and say that ours is the only way as it is for allopathy which has been bullying everyone for the last 80 years saying ours is the way right now we are at a weak point of allopathy because they can't find a vaccine and they can't find truths to move forward but the fact is that it's not just the allopathic doctors it is the government officials the ias officers the scientists the commerce people the journalists who all believe that the mainstream of medicine is about science and randomized trials and molecules and mechanisms of action that are based on the biology and the chemistry that they think is the truth now we all know that a lot of the most modern frontiers of mainstream science are being ignored but as long as the conventional everyday society doesn't understand that there are people like our panelists today who have done a lot of reading and who understand much much more we don't need to defeat what we need to do is defeat ignorance if anything we need to bring the entire group of people who are in the mainstream society who are not technical people they are the ones that need to understand where ayurveda works where 
allopathy works, where homeopathy works, and to have their right of choice. I have the right to learn Malayalam or Telugu or Marathi, even though I'm a native Bengali speaker. I have been encouraged to learn Hindi so I can get along and read government documents and get along with moving around India more easily. But I cannot be forced and defeated. So we need to get away from war words. If there's one thing that I would like to eliminate from the allopathic kind of um, pedagogy and the teaching is to use words like defeating, killing, and eliminating in the sense of warring against rather than of getting rid of things that don't work in a more benign way. I don't know if that was helpful to your answer because you're still on mute, Dr. Harish. Um, but I would like to say that it is time to end and uh, we've been going way too long as we usually do. And we started at 4.30 and we're now over four hours into this call. I thank all of you who have contributed, especially in the last half hour in the chat. We are going to keep the chat and we are going to read through each line to make sure that we got everything while we were speaking. And Dr. Madan and I uh, will welcome you to come back in the next month's session, which is in the uh, first week of November. The first Sunday is actually the first of November. And it will be a session on the question, does homeopathy work? In that session, we have invited Dr. Ratin Chakraborty, who is a homeopathic doctor who has also studied modern medicine in his early days, but has been practicing homeopathy for over 30 years. He happened to also be part of the government, having been mayor of the Howrah Municipal Corporation and the head of the Bholanath. Chakravarti Trust, where he practices, ayur, uh, sorry, practices homeopathy. We've also invited Simon Taffler, who's a very well-known homeopath in London. We're waiting to hear from him about the invitation, hoping that he will accept. And we've got a third speaker who has yet to be confirmed. Those three panelists being homeopaths are going to discuss how homeopathy works and why it works. And it will be a wonderful session for all people interested in holistic and world medicines. So we invite you to join us for that. Dr. Madan, is there anything else you would like to contribute before we finish? Thank you, Vaswati. I just want to add that we, we will have a national webinar in between before the 1st of November. We'll have a national seminar and we will uh, a webinar and also a uh, international webinar. The details will be shared to all who are registered. That's great. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you for those of you who stuck it out during the entire time. And for those of you who were able to join later, uh, thank you. If there's anyone else who would like to say anything, uh, just raise your hand in the participants group. Okay, good. So a last thank you to Mr. Benny Thomas, who has been running the Ayurveda Health and Tourism magazine for many, many years. We all look to that magazine for education. And it's just, it's so much better to sit down and read that magazine than to read some of these other crazy news that come up. So thank you to Benny Thomas and to each of you who have contributed. All of you make this community the valley, the Ayush Valley. Thank you. Madan? I'd, I'd leave it with Benny for his last words. Benny, please. Uh, yes, Dr. Madan, thank you so much. I was uh, listening to the Aish hard talk and it was far, far better than our expectation. The participation was wonderful and I'm sure we can do better, far, far better than this one. And we get more audience, more attendees, and the more panelists. And Dr. Maspati, thank you so much for initiative and your uh, uh, active participation, active moderation. And uh, Dr. Madan, thank you so much. And uh, really just a wonderful, wonderful event. And I know already it is uh, 
840 now in as IST, but almost uh, for a waste, 10 minutes we have covered. And still we have uh, attendees yes. eagerly listening yes. to the talk. Yes. That means there are people, there are takers for our uh, argument or our concept. Thank you so much. One you all all the best. When will this uh, be available for the people who were not able to listen live or would like to share the recording with their friends? Maybe within uh, two or three days. And they should go to where? Pardon me? Where should they go to find the talk? We will share. We will share on Facebook and as well as in our site, in our portal. Exactly. Thank you, sir. Thank yes. you so much. Bye. Good night. Thank you, Benny. Before we log off, please could uh, uh, Yadu save the Zoom chat and also Yadu, also the question answer session. I have copied uh, something over, but I would like it also to be a soft copy somewhere there, please. I, I have copied already. Thank you, Benny. I have done, yeah. Uh, so, uh, last thing for me, thanks, Baswati, thank you. It was an absolutely wonderful session. We had uh, extremely... Well, well, thank, you for, thank you for your... Thank um, you for your hard work. Where are Benny? Was it 70-something? Pardon me? How many maximum people were there listening? Uh, it was okay. about 100. We had a very, very good... But that is 100 minutes above I mean, uh, in live in our webinar. But apart from that, we had uh, uh, many participants in uh, Facebook yeah. and other channels, yeah, social media. Yes, I couldn't see that. So I think the recording is also very useful for some of the people who don't want to be seen, but they want to listen to it later. Because yes. that, you know, people should not uh, miss this concept because you know those who are interested in Ayurveda and allopathy, they will come to us because there was you know, many, many valid points we discussed. That's right. And I think many of the government officials and entrepreneurs who want to do something in Ayurveda, they needed to understand this, but they don't want to be seen. So yes, they... I, I know. They can't come forward. That's okay. Well, but... It's all right. Because I think what was, uh, uh, Baswatiji, what was very important here is that uh, YK Guptaji is willing to bring us all together and thank you for your discussions with Guptaji that has enabled all this. So there we are. We are in a very strong position. I have a very personal story with Guptaji because when I was trying to get into BHU, he was actually one of the people that I had to write to to get my equivalence of my degree, my master's in pharmacology. And so he remembered me vaguely from that time and couldn't quite place where and why. And when I explained it to him, he said, ah, this is, I remember this entire story. And when I told him uh, what had happened, he actually started sharing with me some of the ethical issues that he has at Ames. And I was quite, um, quite shocked to hear that these kind of things happen across the system. And he told me some stories and I told him, well, this is also happening you know, at some of these other places. And I mentioned some of my um, friends and, you know, Kostav, right, Dr. Kostav Dalal, and I mentioned some of the so very different flavor than he had in the first part of the conversation. And at that point, he really committed because he understands that these soft skills and the coming together and pooling resources is what's not happening right now. And that's why we are not moving forward. So that's uh, going to shape. We are also going to have a wonderful talk, hard talk next month, Benny G, because yes. we're going to have two really good homeopaths. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking for someone. I actually know who the third person is, but I have to just do a little bit of um, discussion with Dr. Madan about that. And we're going to have a very potent one because a lot of Ayurvedic doctors don't understand homeopathy. Mm -hmm. Yes. They don't understand what it is. They, they think Ayurveda and homeopathy. Even Guptaji kept saying Ayurveda and homeopathy. And it gets the two of them in one muddle. And they're actually they very, this. very separate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They mix the two up and they cause a lot of problems. 
That's right. So it's just about awareness that we are, we are going to bring that. So that's going to be a very, very good talk. And hopefully we'll be able to popularize that one for the people um, in homeopathic schools around the country and around the world so that they really access that. But we need speakers who are really going to talk at deeper levels, not politely, superficially, but really get into the meat of the issue. It, it should be a hard talk. Yeah, yeah, it should be a hard talk. And I'm not sure that today was a real hard talk. I'm not sure. I will not say that today's first hour actually covered issues in the hard way that we needed because everyone kept agreeing with each other. As, try, as much as I tried to just start a jagra, I was not able to get them to disagree simply because they've already evolved. They are not stuck at that side where they think that their point is superior. They're too open-minded. We needed some more yeah. closed-minded yeah. people in order to have a proper jagra. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Very well said. So. Very well said. Um, and they said it. They said, you know, we need more people to be more open-minded. So part of me says, yes, that's true. And part of me says, it's true. And there needs to be a place where not everyone is forced to speak the same language, right? We can't all be forced to speak Malayalam. We can't all be forced to speak uh, Oriya, right? There are different, there's unity in diversity. And I really think that Ayurvedic people who are practicing properly cannot be forced to hybridize what they're doing. It's going to, um, it's going to take away the efficacy for the, for the patients. I don't see I don't see that as a difficulty because we don't get a consultant neurologist to mix things up with something else. We don't. We don't get a consultant neurologist to discuss diabetology. We don't. So we should give them the same status. You see, the status of an Ayurveda person is a hyper specialist in a super specialist setting. That's the position they must have. Okay, so that means that every patient's going to get baseline medical treatment that's allopathic? Is that what you're proposing? No, no, no. They get baseline on all the areas. So, and as we go further up, you will have people who are specializing. I I'd, I'd slightly disapprove of this general Ayurveda system that we have. Everybody is treating everybody else because... Uh, there are specializations where, suppose you talk about um, uh, intervertebral disc prolapse, you know, there may be people who are getting very special, very exciting results, and that must become specialization. So don't use Ayurveda in its generic form as a specialization. I would want to, suppose we, get, we had lady there, Sumi, who was here today, and she says, I'm a musculoskeletal person. And musculoskeletal thing is such a big bag already. We want to start specializing. To Mamsa Dhatu, if it's musculoskeletal, Mamsa Dhatu. Start specializing. No, no. Uh, start specializing so that you see how their uniqueness comes out. So I would take somebody who's, uh, I read a person who's known to be very good at using Rasa Aushadis, and I would take that specialty and put, offer it as a hyper specialization. And you say, okay, here is a hyper specialist like uh, Balendu Prakashji, who's got 1,200 cases for pancreatitis. That's a super hyper specialization. He says, bring any patient with pancreatitis and I will see what best I can do because I've already done 1,200 cases. So he is not only doing Rasa Aushadis, but he's also doing um, something that the modern medicine recognizes as uh, inflammation of the pancreas and he manages to control that. So our, our discussion must go a little bit in that direction where we are respecting, we're not getting them to, we're not getting the rest of idea to change his or her way of thinking, but we are saying you are specializing. It's interesting. You've got 500 cases on treating this condition. Are you happy to remain that way? We don't want you to dilute that ability. You know? Okay, we don't so want to get a patient with intervertebral disc prolapse, they should be the place to go and you send them all to Balendu. Right, that's fine for that. But what about diabetes? It's the same, it's the same thing. You know, 
what are you going to use? When are you going to use homeopathy? Are you going to use modern? Sorry, well, are you going to use that? What's your approach? The, the what is happening? If you follow the model that's been uh, funded for the Sadhguru's group in Chennai, the consultation happens with the patient on one side and five specialists on the other side. So that's the format that's evolving. See? This is so, in Coimbatore or in Chennai, Dr. Madan? In Chennai, in Chennai. Chennai. It's the so, same format that all integrative uh, groups. So they're all there. The five specialists are there and there is one patient and they listen to your story and, and then they consult among each other and say, okay, looks like I can do this. That means the five systems are already familiar with each other. They're happy to work together. You know? Ayurveda, Siddha, Homeopathy, Yunani, and yoga, all working together. They're all there. They're not diluting their expertise. They're all equally on the same level in terms of their ability. They're all at consultant level. They work. And I think that is something that can work very easily. It can work for certain patients, especially for patients who don't have easily diagnosable disease. But I'll tell you, if I'm treating a diabetes patient, and I'm going to have to work with five other doctors on the approach of it. I am so sick and tired of people saying that diabetes people should not have sugar and that they shouldn't eat sugar. So that they shouldn't have chavan brush. They shouldn't have, they should have sugar free. They should use aspartame. I can't work so no, with other people. Rasmati, you are now, you have brought this down to the level of Vyabahar. Of? Vyabahar. So we are talking about raising the level up to Shastra, somebody who knows the Shastra. I'm not going to debate. If I'm an Ayurveda person, I'm not going to debate with the diabetologist because their Shastra is that. My Shastra is this. And that is exactly where Nechil and Muraridhar Sharma and Gopi Krishna and many of the who are so good that they say, you know what, just leave me alone. I'm going to sit in my village. I'm not going to bother to try to integrate. I'm not going to sit with a panel of homeopaths no, and sit. Perfectly fine. We don't, no, they're happy doing what they're doing. But what we are saying is they're happy doing what they're doing. Kerala has the moose families. They don't need to integrate with anybody. They have enough people coming and getting healed, and that's fine. That's we right. are talking about the bulk. There is a bulk, and that bulk is preventing this excellence from rising. Well, the bulk, unfortunately, is 90% of exactly. people. So this is the bulk that we are talking about. And the bulk is being amplified. If you look at the list of All India Institutes of Medical Sciences that are coming up across the country, there are so many blossoming. I think there are 22 coming up. Now. And they're getting the construction and someone is pocketing a lot of money for that. Yeah, that's a different issue. Tell me, but, in those buildings that they're coming up with, but, where is the competence within those buildings? Why yeah. are those buildings empty because as Dr. Gupta said, people are just not there. What is that? I think that is the, that is the challenge for us. If I put myself in the position of the Ayushu Valley Foundation, my discussion with Gupta Ji now is that the foundation wants to engage with the All India Institutes of Medical Science to understand this better. And we will bring those skills into these places. We will identify those driven doctors. So I'm, I'm playing a little bit for the Irish saying, we are a centralized resource, we feel for this. And we feel that there isn't enough competence and confidence in the Ayurvedic community to fill those spaces. We have an academy where we will take those students coming through first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, we will expose them to these environments and we will make sure that they have the confidence to present themselves. And how and we make sure? See, this is what I keep getting back to again and again. People beg for money. I tell them, okay, I'll give you two crores. Now you tell me exactly what you as the dean, as the director, as the person in charge, and we can name names. Ask Tanuja what she's going to do for the AI. Oh, let's not, let's let's not go into... Let yeah. us what are they specifically going to do? So let, us, let us not go into... Where we have one very well-known person. No. What he would do as three different, you know, innovative ideas that should be funded. He can't even speak an idea. What so, do you do? That's fine. It's just, it's a very... It's, 
it's very young, early days as far as that institution is concerned. So, but we have other opportunities. Uh, and it's so wonderful that Guptaji is here with us today and he's expressed his thoughts. He's happy to engage. So we will have other avenues to do this. You know. So let us not focus on any person or on any institution. Let's look at the general principle. There is a need to have those skills at a high level of integrity. They must understand modern medicine. They must understand their own principles. And that will not happen, that will not come easily. It is a challenge in education to bring out those students who understand, who have that vasana. We have to, that's the job of a teacher. We have to identify those students. Those students are there. We have to identify those students. We might get two or three to start with. And as the ball starts rolling, the more excited ones will see, ah, there is a future here. I can work in the same institution, this All India Institute of Medical Science, excellent campuses, well-resourced, and I will be looked after there. These are the worries that are, I think uh, Kiran Lal raised it very nicely saying, right now we are doing everything. We are making our own medicines. We are doing our own PR. We are doing... No, that is not the way it has to be. It has to be different. And the government must encourage this. And we must facilitate that change. So that's not... A, One of the problems in those committees that are making the decisions. Yeah, but there's not worry about... They cannot stand another opinion. They cannot... Yeah. Because they have the idea that this is how it has to be done. And they're not actually brains. So we have people like brain. Kamal Krishnan. We yeah, have people the, there. Basically. I think... Yeah, what and then... What we are enabling, I think you are highlighting all the points. I'm not disagreeing with you. I see these points. I see the disappointment. I see, uh, it was lovely to hear from Guptaji, the disappointment. He says, you know, I go into these big buildings and the people are so unmotivated. They're just not interested. We, don't, we cannot permit that. We can, it cannot happen. And I think there is a reason here to say, you can ask this question, how come there is all the Institute of Ayurveda? And we have so many, uh, in Orissa, we have um, all in the Institute of Medical Science, it has an Ayurveda block. How come it is not working? How come, where are these, what were these appointments? What are these motivations for the people? So we can ask all those questions, but at least the most important thing for me out of this, what you uh, conducted today, is that we have reached a point where we can dialogue with the man who is in the Board of Governors for the All India Institutes. And we've got that far, and that is so wonderful. And he stayed with us, he'll come back again, and we will take this dialogue through. We will take it on to the next level and the next level. It might take two or three tries to get to a point where we break ice and we say, this is how it needs to be done. And let us aim for that. So what has happened today is wonderful. I'm happy to see that we had doctors from the National Health Service expressing so clearly their disappointment with modern medicine, the same disappointment that you felt, and the same disappointment that we had from Latvia when uh, we had first, the same disappointment from Czech Republic where Martina says, you know, this was not what I came to do in modern medicine. So we have brought those emotions out again from many more people. So we can rightly say that this uh, uni universal kind of, um, expressions. It's happening in UK, it's happening in Spain, it's happening in Portugal, it's happening in Czech Republic, it's happening. So people are feeling unhappy. And to have young students who come along and say, you know, that we are more receptive for something else. So we are able to articulate this because we've heard this from many, many places. We have heard this from different people from different places. So, and we've brought people on the table now who can take this forward. So our challenge at this point, I feel, is to keep the momentum high. It's been a lot of work to get this uh, platform set up and we've got some momentum. Let us keep this going now, uh, not just for India, but for the rest of the world. And uh, it will be a lot of work, but we will have wonderful people who will join us in this effort as we go along. And many, many uh, energetic people will join us. And I think it will be quite wonderful uh, to see how this unfolds. It will mature into a, a quite, uh, a, 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 it'll be 
a dramatic shift in thinking at many, many other institutions too, as we go along. So I'm sorry that uh, Kamal Banikji did not want to join us, but he's been sending us so many lovely comments. Banikji, if you are still with us, please do join, but otherwise we are going to wind the session down. And he's just writing things and I've I know. No, he's writing so many things, so many lovely things. Loud place where he can't uh, be uh, audio abled. That okay. could be. But he's not writing that he's not audio abled. I've asked him why he can't get online. And Jagvirji has raised a very important point about veterinary medicine and uh, integrating. So we will come. Uh, we will come to all this. Uh, so, Basmithji, if uh, if we can, if we are done, if there is, if there are no more uh, discussions, we still have fifteen people here who are. Yes, wondering if you guys are actually here or if you're just uh, having dinner and you just left the phone yeah, this in the side. It could be that they left it in the other room and they just left it on so that they could look like they are healthy. Let me just let me just check because there is Anne from Seattle. Anne. Anne Holiday. Anne Holiday. Hello, Anne. Yeah. Yeah. Are you oh, there? You are there. Hello, Anne. Yes, How are you? I, have, I am fine. Thank you. I have uh, been any, very interested in this conversation because there are tremendous barriers to uh, um, in, in the practice of Ayurveda. That I've, I've been doing Ayurveda now since 2006. But prior to that, I was in modern medicine and uh, in cancer therapy, actually. And the point that was brought up today about documentation, I think, is a very important one. Um, Ayurveda physicians in general do not document what they do. And there's no standard... They, they, they have this idea that each patient is a is a is a individual and has to be treated individually, but that's all very well. But um, how do you translate that into a system that can be generally utilized that we can all practice? Um, because that's the thing in in uh, in modern medicine. If we use that as a model. Um, they have standard ways of documenting and doing their own clinical um, um, case studies, if you like. And so then they can go back and see where the trends are and what it is they can do to become, like you say, a specialist in whatever area they're good at and where they have a number of patients. And that's how... Um, confidence builds in the Ayurvedic approach. And I think that's the big problem in modern medicine that because, because it's so vague, you know, it's difficult to explain and it's difficult to translate into a, a system that, that, that can be adapt, adapted to and we, where we can refer this patient over there because he's going to treat this patient in such a way. That's, I think documentation, like you said, is a very big uh, issue. When I first went into medicine, um, I, I was at the Christie Hospital and Holt Radium Institute in, in Manchester. And that was at the time where we didn't know how to treat patients at all. There was no, there was no real model. It was all trial and error. You can only do so much on animal models. And so what we did, we started um, a tumor registry and documented all of the, 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 how patients were treated and then they went on particular protocols and all of that was um, then documented and, and, and the data shown what worked and what did not work. And then there were long follow-ups about the results of the treatment. And so I think that's what has to happen in Ayurveda to make it really a system that, pe that can, people can feel confident in. It's not a matter of, as you say, um, having an alternative to modern medicine. 
it's not a, an, it, it's getting it. A, we have very sophisticated systems out there now because of the way we uh, treat, uh, and, and you go to a physician and he has access to PubMed. He has access to all kinds of documentation, which he can interpret. We don't have that. And so I think that's a big uh, issue in Ayurveda. I just wanted to add that. And I think it's a big barrier for us who's, who are out there uh, could, practicing. Could you just uh, clarify what you said that he has access, to, who's he that has access to all those data, but he can't interpret it? Who's the he? Is that the Ayurvedic doctor or the patient or the Well, it's anybody, because and you know, and I think that's another issue is that we only have Ayurvedic doctors practicing in Ayurveda. In, Ayurveda. In, in allopathy, we have all different levels of people who have an understanding of, um, of, the, of the process. They may not have the expertise, but they are, they are working in the, in, the, in the process. We don't have that in Ayurveda. Are you sure? Well, I don't think so. Because I work in a hospital and we have Ayurvedic massage therapists, we have Ayurvedic junior assistants, and in the Gurukul system, you have a senior physician and you have a bunch of junior physicians. And so right now I'm working with the senior physician and there are three or four of us who take instructions and translate to patients and make the medicines and make sure that the patient has what they need. It's called upastata in the uh, Sanskrit language. And um, we are all part of that team. There's just I don't think that's a general thing, though, for most people. Well, I've practiced for, for the last eight years, and I know probably about 5,000 people. And I'll say that there's only a few of them that are just a single Ayurvedic doctor practicing. Most Ayurvedic people have team. If you go to the Samajan, which is one of the oldest uh, Ayurvedic houses in, um, in Kerala, and you go to the Zamoran, which is this, uh, well, anyway, the Samadhan is one of the, the oldest houses, and they had Ayurvedic doctors. There was a senior doctor, there was a second senior doctor, and there was a whole team of junior doctors. There's a whole group of Ayurvedic nurses, Ayurvedic therapists, Ayurvedic medicine makers, Ayurvedic pharmacists, Ayurvedic um, orderlies, you can say. And they all participate in this hospital that's still open today. Next time that you come to Kerala, it would be really wonderful for you to take a tour of such kind of hospitals. Mm -hmm. that's what oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't mean that. I, I know that those systems exist, but it's not a general... Okay. I, I live out on the West Coast. And, and let, um, me, let, me, you know, let me interrupt you. Let me just interrupt here because I know... Uh, Anne knows Kerala very well. She spends a lot of time in Kerala. I think the point that Anne, she works a lot with the NG University in Kotayam, and she connects with people up in many parts of Kerala. So Anne knows Kerala well. I think the point that Anne is trying to convey is that from her perspective, she worked in Manchester at a time when people were just learning how to use radiation, radio, you know, isotopes for therapy. And what she's trying to say is there was a system that evolved slowly with time that helped them improve the treatments. They didn't have anything to stop with. Now, Ayurveda has 5,000 years of a system, but it doesn't yes. have the data. Yes, it does. It just doesn't have so, If I go to government Ayurveda college in Trivandrum, there are seven of X number of government Ayurveda colleges in many parts of the country. If I say, how many panchakarmas did you do last year? And what did you do this for? And how many males and how many females were there? Zero. Nothing. They don't know what they've done. No. They don't know. Exactly. And panchakarma has been going on in Ayurveda for X thousands of years. There is an institute for panchakarma in Shornur. And I'm hoping to meet with them sometime. If I go into any of the colleges, a thousand bed hospital, and I say, how many panchakarmas did you do? I know I go to Pune. And they say, we do hundreds of panchakarmas every day. And I say, where is the data? What have you done? No, we don't have it. So this is the point, I think. And am I right? Is that what you're conveying? Absolutely, yes, okay. that's exactly. absolutely right. Uh, I, I went to work with a, a very renowned um, doc, uh, Ayurvedic doctor. 
uh, who was getting amazing results according to him. And I said, well, how can we document uh, how these patients were treated and, you know, just basic things even, how many males, how many, the age and all of that. He, he said, well, you can just go to my website and I have de- uh, um, case studies to show how successful I am. But you see, that doesn't work in the model, modern world. It doesn't work in the modern world. You've got to have data like uh, well, Madame says. And thank you so much for sharing this. We deeply appreciate it. I think these are discussions that will come up in the next few meetings as we go along, especially with the detailed discussions with the hospital systems and how to put them in place. There are systems now, if you go to the hospital, the 100-bed hospital in Bangalore, in Yalahanka at the FRLHT, uh, at the Transdisciplinary University Hospital, uh, they have a reasonably good hospital data management system. They can tell you exactly how many number of patients they've had, for what condition, what treatments, et cetera, et cetera. So thank you so much for adding to this. Baswati, I want to see if we can draw this to a close. There is one, only one other person who's here, Ruma, Ruma Chowdhury. I just see. Yeah, and I just want to say, Anne, thank you for what you said. I would love to have a longer discussion with you about this. Um, there's a lot of things to tell you and to share with you about what you said, you know, and I'm not sure that Madan wants me to start a discussion right now on this. Yeah, no, I agree. Yes, I think we could, we could. Uh, data are there. there are, those data are there. If you are the right person, they will show you. If you're not, they won't. Yeah. I got shouted at last Monday for trying to talk to someone about Kajali. And he was so arrogant that he shouted at me because he thinks that Kajali is in a certain way. And what I did is I just got quiet. I just got quiet. I'm not going to share what I know about Kajali because if people yell at me and shout at me and are condescending and arrogant, I'm not going to share it. And that is what has happened for the Ayurvedic people. Exactly. And this, is a, this, is a problem. this is a problem in the community. It's a huge problem because we are so insulted by people who think that they know more because they think, you know, the way to share data is not necessarily to put it in a list where everyone can look at it. Because what's going to happen is that someone's going to take those data and they are going to exploit it. And that's what has happened to India for 300 years by Europeans. And so when I talk to Ayurvedic people and say, we don't need people to know what we're doing because all they will do is take it and exploit it. And it's not just Europeans anymore. It's the Americans, it's the Indians who are Westernized. They wanna take the data and they want to uh, exploit it. And so the way to learn it is to go and sit with the person and to actually learn what's there. And then if you want to help them and they trust you, they will, they will share with you. The data are there. They have to know, you know, because they have to make the medicine for those people. So they know exactly what's going on. There are some, Baswati, thank you so much for, share, for adding to this. There are several issues here when it comes to scale up and when you want to, you know, we, we should, second thing I want to say is that Ayurveda should not be seen only as curative. There are three no. other dimensions. To, there are three other dimensions to Ayurveda, which is health promotion, health maintenance, disease prevention. These are all aspects of Ayurveda. And all of that needs to come out and become part of the normal narrative about health. Uh, And this is very, very important that we offer a a, a rounded perspective on Ayurveda and Ayush systems in general. And not just the curative aspect. That is not what Ayurveda is all about and the Ayush systems are all about. They have a health promotion, a health maintenance, and a disease prevention aspect to it. And within each of those areas is deep biology, deep physiology, deep uh, neuroanatomy involved, and all that will come up. I want to see if we can bring one last person. Ruma, are you there? Well, Do you want? Yes, I am. Uh, Ruma, namaste. Now, please. Ruma, I just want to tell you a little bit about Ruma. Ruma comes from West Bengal. She, uh, oh, she studied medicine in, uh, in, in uh, Cardiff, if I'm right. Yes. And she later was uh, here in Cambridge for many years. She was uh, involved with our um, Medical Research Council Brain uh, Repair Center. She was guiding PhD students. She's done 
uh, quite a lot of work on innovative uh, uh, research areas in brain health. Ruma, you have a few minutes for us, if you have. Yes, you. I'm, totally, I'm totally agreed with you that yes, Ayurveda, we're not thinking only cure. Yes, we should think about prevention and healthy, because I will talk about saying brain, not brain, healthy body and healthy mind, right? But uh, so a lot of, I read about Ayurveda, what they're using, the, because my great grandfather was a very famous Ayurvedic professor. So I do know, but I am, because I'm a scientist and I wanted to know every components, which I discuss with you, when you say, maybe people, you will say in Ayurveda that is not possible. But like, if I say, if I, just the example, the karela is incredible vegetable. It has so much um, in a quality. So to convince to the um, Western medicine and Ayurveda together, we need to know all the components and we need to know how these components is protecting us. Am I wrong on that? I think yeah, I agree with you. I don't know what Baswatiji wants to say, please, Baswatiji. So you want us, uh, you want the Ayurvedic people to convince the modern people how Karela is valid? Not the convince, not the word convince. Is the, what is the component? How the components are working? So we can discuss, you know, yes, these are the good part. And again, this could be the toxicity. We should have a very transparent, that's yes. what is used in Ayurveda, how that could be more transparent. It has a predominance of Akasha and Vayu Bhuta, which means they have more of the two elements that are the lightest. They have more of the Tikta and the Kashaya Rasa, which means they have more bitterness and they have more um, of the astringents. If you understand that that is the Rasa, that is the taste that is involved I by the tongue, then you'll understand that that then goes to the brain and invokes an entire system of digestion so that those bhutas, those elements are taken from that karela and brought into the body, which is mostly kapha. Kapha is the opposite, it's very heavy. And so that lightness brings in a sense of balance into the body. Karela also has several things it does to the agni because when you have more air and more uh, astringents, more akash, there's room for a different kind of digestion to go on. That's a more medicinal kind of digestion. Yeah, yeah, I, I know that. But it's the thing, Karela has polyphenol, it has a antioxidant. To convince or to make it transparent, we need to work together I, to I, show that these are the components in the Karela, which is Ayurveda saying, you know, Agni or whatever. But that's how it's working. I have a tremendous respect. But I am a scientist, like to bring things more clear to public. So you want to bring things clear in your language. And that's what we've been talking about today. Why does it have to be clear in your language? Why can't it be clear when I say Akash Vayu? Why can't it also be clear? If you can learn what hexane is, and you can make people learn in the public what coronavirus is, then why can't we make them learn what Vata Pitta Kapha, Akash Vayu, Agni Jal Prithvi is. Why can't I, we... I do know that, right? But it is to the general public. Right. You know, we to the general public. Why do we have to kowtow that everything has to be in the words of polyphenols? Why can't we put it in the Dravya Guna language? Why can't that be part of the growing language of science? Well, maybe one day, but it will take a long time now. But that's not my uh, point. My point is if we could teach people in six months what coronavirus is, and we can teach people what remdesivir is, and we can teach a certain person to pronounce hydroxychloroquine, which you couldn't pronounce for days and days until, you know, uh, then why can't we get people to understand a different paradigm, a different way to cross-weave science so that they can understand. When you can explain quantum mechanics to people and they understand what a void formation is, or they understand what entanglement theory is, 
and they can understand the basics of quantum mechanics, which directly speak to the wisdom in Ayurveda. And this is stuff that quantum mechanics physicists at the highest levels of science, you know, scientists are understanding. Then if they can understand that, then they just need to jump over from quantum mechanics and understand what Ayurveda has been saying for 5,000 years. It's not impossible for us to demand that people should start speaking the Ayurveda language without having to always translate something to polyphenols. Because once those medicinal chemists are done with their polyphenols and glycosides and all, what they're finding out is it's a bunch of crock. It doesn't work. You cannot take piperine and have it have the same effect as maricha, which is black pepper. You cannot take curcumin and have it have the same effect as turmeric, haldi. And once they do those chemical, you know, thousands of dollars of research, this is one of the reasons why I left mainstream pharmacology, because I realized they don't have the answers. Dravya Guna is a much more elegant, much more complete, and much more clinical and clinically relevant, direct from soil to seed to uh, stomach. It's just, and to sell from the stomach to the cell, it's just much more elegant. And that's why someone like me has decided that we just need to get the common public to start speaking the more, the larger framework of a scientific language. This is a, you rounded it out nicely, Vasvati. It's a, there's a little bit of anthropology here, you know, medical anthropology. It comes into that lovely domain of um, medical anthropology. Now, I have one last person here, Christina Fritas. Christina, would you want to add something? Christina? Christina, unmute if you wanted to add something. Uh, and, and before Christina joins, uh, thanks. Christina, are you there? Yes, Dr. Elo. Christina, thank you for coming and joining us. You yes, come. yes, it is, it is, it is a, a, a very interesting uh, point of view uh, that has been uh, given across uh, by Dr. Baswati. I uh, really uh, applause uh, the straightforwardness and the courage to address uh, the point uh, in this way. And this is the language that we in the West absolutely need uh, to hear from the scholars and to uh, start uh, engaging in. Um, so therefore, I am really uh, pleased to... Um, where are you joining us from? Today? I am joining from the Netherlands. I am a student of Ayurveda since two years. And I am joining from the Netherlands. How did you hear about? I've been about interested in Ayurveda since many years, but finally I I now studying the science. How did and you feel about the discussion? I'm really interested in dissemination of this uh, science, and indeed the, the reason why I uh, decided in, indeed to join uh, formal uh, courses. Um, a line of study was indeed to uh, uh, the language, you know, to 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 be empowered by the the modern language medicine, in holistic health. Christina, are you trained in modern medicine, or are you? Uh... Uh, no, I'm not trained in modern medicine. No. Now, Christina, will you will you be happy to share your contact details with everybody here? Yes, I will, doctor. Yes, certainly. There's still many people here who might want to connect with you because um, you are based. Where in the Netherlands are you? I am based in The Hague. The Hague. Where you are? Yes, I am based in The Hague. And, um, and I notice uh, indeed uh, that uh, there is a lot of interest in the corporate world. Um, uh, and also amongst the younger generations uh, to understand the, the language. Uh, so I think it's more a language, a language uh, issue. So if we can really uh, educate uh, 
people that will be that will be a major step forward and it is the time now because there is a great opening for this understanding at the moment i'm very grateful that ruma ray chowdhury who was here with us ruma asked that question because uh, ruma is trained in modern medicine she's of indian origin and i'm happy you know the ruma's grandfather was a very important ayurveda physician in calcutta and i'm happy that Vasavati addressed that question so clearly and uh, I, I both... have a tremendous respect for ayurveda but as i am very inquisitive minded because anything in science has to be clear and i am looking on the gut brain interaction definitely right. karela have a role or other many other component but we have to show that this is the way it's working to convince the people and the knows and the le- there is very little side effect if we want to to bring the two sides together we have to work together to convince the people you no need to learn all the languages but if you have interest you can no i'm happy ruma i'm happy what we are very lucky that you have joined us today and uh, once again ruma lives just 200 yards from my house and we haven't seen yes, each we... other since uh, since last year i think ruma bangali ha ami bangali to nei mone holo the surname dekhe dujone we are both bengali that is one common no i have tremendous respect i do read i you know look in ayurveda and but is a thing that if we can clear up little bit more and then we can convince people in cambridge there is big pharmaceutical company also trying to use ayurveda but they won't call it ayurveda because they will all call natural uh, uh, components okay so uh, it is important we should try to get people interested and try to help them to understand but which is you know, is very good thing what if someone took something that was done at university of cambridge and just changed the language and just took it took the language and just you know change a bit and then just took it like you just take uh something that's invented in the cavendish and you just take it right well, there will be there will be people like that but we have to you know we, we we are not going to curse them or anything let them do what they like to do i have done a lot of work on curcumin and as you say it is true turmeric work because the comp- uh, when you make artificial curcumin is break down the bond and then these two com- components curcumin doesn't work right so that why our natural products what use in ayurveda definitely have a role okay but we have to explain them i gave several lecture on that and i just showed them that you know you want to make synthetic curcumin do it but it doesn't reach to the brain well, It cannot cross the blood brain barrier. Your Ruma, you, that knowledge all uh, very well known is a coronary structure, but everyone ignores it. There's a lot of things in science that are already known that Dr. Madan and I talk about where one side has this part and one side has this part and this is known and that's known and they're known in different sciences, different of the, our modern sciences and they don't put them together. If you think about quaternary structure, it absolutely explains why none of these molecules are working in the living system because when you take it's curcumin when you take it out it's one of the curcuminoids of which there are three and yeah. those are only 3% yeah. of 100%. So yeah. how taking out if you take my finger and you expect it to function you know away from the rest of my body then it won't work it won't work. Yeah. And so yeah. the structure is a very important thing. Yeah. but we have to make this kind of website or lecture and thing explain people simply look that this is the way i would work because it is work together okay like um madan gave me to see one of the um uh, audio tape no sorry video tape and um i really enjoyed yes yeah, so we have to learn and we have to mix ayurveda with the modern medicine and come with something to convince people we will do this ruma what we will do now that we've caught you into our discussions we have fired you up and i hope you will join us in some of our meetings that we are planned for the next few, yeah, next few months ahead we will discuss this and i would 
very much like to see how you can bring some students with you, the, our MD, PhD students, to come and join in these discussions so that they also hear for themselves that there is a la another language to be learned mm. if you can, and that will help you become a better physician and it will, become, it will teach you a better thing. Uh, Christina, thank you so much. We are five hours into our game. I think this is a bit of a marathon show. Thank you so much, Basvati, for holding us together for five, five hours. Christina, would you like to make a quick comment before we leave? If you... Uh, doctor, I, I really wish the best for this endeavor that uh, I see that you are taking. The world is ready for this and we need your efforts. And I'm sure, I'm sure um, we will see the result of this effort that uh, no. you are uh, uh, leading at the moment. I'm very no. grateful for that and I'm sure I will join you again very soon. Thank you, Christina, but we don't know how to reach you. Do share your email address, WhatsApp number or something like that. Yes. In the chat box, if you want to, then we can, otherwise we will find you somewhere in the Hague. Yes, it's a pleasure. I will be in touch, yes. Thank, Thank you. you. And Thank I will you. bring more persons to this forum from, from uh, my world here in Amsterdam in the Hague. This is what we okay. want to hear. Thank you so much. I like what you said about the new language. You are learning the new language and learning how to express That's it. crucial, doctor. That's crucial. This is, a, these are changing times and it's also time to learn this language. We are ready for it. We have a lot of people here who speak this language very fluently and they can explain so many things. So you are, you, you, I hope you joined us early in the discussions, but this is also a very intimate and close discussion. It's very wonderful. Very happy you are here with us, expressing your opinions so clearly. And we look forward to continuing these discussions. The Ayush Valley Foundation is happy to engage with the Netherlands to explore these areas in great detail. If you have students with you who want to understand some of these things, Basvatiji runs a course. The Ayush Valley Foundation is running courses. You can join us, ask all these questions that you have, and we will give you the clearest of answers for all of these things. So I will look forward to that, doctor. So keep Thank in mind, you. you are part of this big family. Welcome to the family, the Ayush Valley family. Thank you. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for coming and expressing your thoughts. So, Paswati, I am delighted that we brought so many people to the table. We have brought so many wonderful minds to the table who are passionate about Ayurveda and who are really <laughs> motivated, want to learn more. I think that's the most important thing. You want to learn much more. And here we are. We are here to be a part of that learning exercise because in the process, we learn about things. We cannot be in Amsterdam in The Hague right now, but you are there and we can learn from you about what is happening in The Hague. So thank yes. you very much. Christina. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I'm you. sure you have much more to tell us about what happens in the Hague. Yes. Vasuti, yes. Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you. We have so much to share and we will have so many other things to do over the next. Join us. You are on a mailing list now, so you will get information about these things. Christina, I'll see you on Wednesday. See you, doctor. Bye. Thank you very much. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Vasuti? Yeah. Thanks to you for your stamina and your, uh, uh, I particularly like the last bit of discussions that you had on how you explained the finger and trying to understand the finger by chopping it away from the hand. In, in biology, we say life is what is lost in the test tube. So mm -hmm. that's the way we think. Yes, but... Uh, you this is what is so unsatisfying for me. I wanted to have these discussions in the first hour. Yeah, mind. We'll do, we'll do it again. We can change the format around so that we have the discussions first and have people sit uh, No, I don't think that's the way to do it. Or maybe, yeah, we have to have the discussions first and have the speakers later because the speakers are very, very high-minded. They don't have the problems that um, most of the mm -hmm. mainstream people have that are writing and talking about their difficulties, right? You know what the people like Anand S have. Yeah, no, no, don't go into names now. Let us, let us leave it like that and let us have a chat over the next 24 hours. I'm happy we have reached where we are. 
we are still we are still ten attendees here. Uh, I am thankful to all for being with us, and that's all I can say, Vasudev, for you to wind it up now. We will. I don't understand why I can't say names of people who have problems and want to see solutions. I think Anand in Trivandrum Medical College is a great person. And why I can't say his name is just a bizarre oh, thing. Oh, sorry. I heard. Sorry. Names all the time. And you don't have any problems with it. But when I call out a name, you always curse. No, I, I, I don't get that. Sorry. I thought you were talking about some other. Some other. That's because you always assume you know more than other people, Madan. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Now That's I want to meet. I want to meet with that person, the Kajali person, you know, that you talked about. I'd love to give him a piece of my. Uh, Can we my end? I just. It's been a really long time. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>